This is my friends. Welcome back. It's a new day, a new beginning, a blank canvas. Time to write a new story for the day. Um, I have been thinking today about when we're kids and we play and we have fun and we just don't really have an idea of, you know, being judged or, or being placed on a certain, sh you know, level, right? We're just all in it together, you know, we're all friends, we're all hanging out, whatever. There, that doesn't begin to happen until, like, I think puberty, right around there, maybe like grade school, but I think mostly puberty, like middle school. Dear God, ugh, I would never want to go back to middle school years. Um, I think that's a pretty general, like, most people don't want to go back to that. Um, however, I was thinking about how when we're kids and we just have the innate desire to just be ourselves and to just not care. Like, we just, we have no concept of anything other than just being in the moment, right? I mean, we're just in the moment. That's that's what that's what's business to us at that time. Playing, having fun, being silly, right? Being childlike. There's a reason why when you see other kids playing and having fun and just laughing like when a little kid giggles or when they act silly and they're, you know, you record it and then that video goes viral, <laughs> whatever it may be. It's because I think there's this deep craving inside of us to to be able to connect with that because somewhere along the way we just kind of start to lose that ability like to lose that childlike capacity to just have fun and not worry about what other people are thinking we spend most of our time thinking about what everyone else is thinking when in reality everybody's all thinking well I wonder what they're thinking we're all wondering what the other person's thinking you know so it doesn't even matter but I, I think that that's why so many adults drink <laughs> because it's like, well, drink, and then it's like we have a scapegoat to act like a kid again, you know, to act silly, to like strip off all of the the things that hold us back from just being ourselves, right? And that's what they say. Like, if you want to know what someone's really like, get them drunk because it takes all of those inhibitions away and who they really are comes out. Could be really scary for a lot of people. My friends often tease me because I, um, I mean, I like a good glass of wine and, or a mixed drink here and there, but I have never been drunk before. Um, it's not appealing to me, um, really, at all. Um, well, there was one time where maybe I was a little drunk, but it was at my uh, a boyfriend's parents' house, so I don't even know if that counts if you're with family. It was very embarrassing, but <laughs> story for another time. Um, however, like, I've, I have always been, uh, it's always been very easy for me to just be silly. Um, I think that it probably gets on a lot of people's nerves, but I have learned to love that about myself. I have learned to appreciate the fact that I'm able, um, to do that, sorry, um, I'm able to do that without, um, you know, without worrying so much about what people think. The reality is, is I'm at the age now that it's kind of like a take it or leave it. Like, I don't, I don't want to, like, be crazy and put people off on purpose, but I like that I can just relax and be myself and be silly, and I hope that it makes people around me comfortable to do the same because we need that. We need that outlet to just have fun and kick our shoes off and be silly. So one of the ways that I foster this is I practice this at home quite frequently and I have music on all the time. Like I, I love just about every kind of music there is and it is not unusual for me. It would be unusual for me actually to have music on and not be kicking my heels up or wherever I'm at, busting a move. Um, not saying that they're great, but it doesn't matter. That's not what it's about. It's just about releasing stress and releasing anxiety and, and worry and concern and just like all the adult things that bog our mind down. For that moment, I'm just having fun, right? Just having fun. Same reason why I like to work out. Because when I work out, 
I'm, you know, I'm moving around, I'm getting all the endorphins going, I'm releasing stress, I'm challenging myself, which again makes me feel like I'm productive and I'm conquering something and that's something that I need to feel. It's something that I can control, you know, like I can, I know that if I go work out and if I get my, you know, my butt on the Jacob's Ladder or I do my, okay, my camera died so I had to fix that. Um, anyways, there, this is part of what I was sharing in my previous video about this is a process, this is a whole body experience, just life, right? I mean, it's not just about the physical part or just the emotional part or just the mental part or, you know, the external parts like, you know, your job or your friends or your marriage or your family or your kids or, you know, whatever it may be. It's it's an all-encompassing thing. Like, it's a lifestyle. It's, it's everything all rounded out. So, this is kind of my journey this year is figuring out the balance, right? Um... <clears throat> I have been reaching into different depths, I will say, um, trying out different thoughts and theories and ideas that before uh, maybe I wasn't open to or I wasn't aware of or whatever it may be. And so this year is kind of like a, a soul journey for me to try to incorporate more things to um, replenish my spirit and my soul and to make me just a more peaceful like calm person like I'm very fiery and kind of crazy when I need to be but I also can be impatient and um, a little high stress and it's harder for me to like slow down see the big picture and just enjoy the moments and maybe that's something that a lot of people struggle with you know I think as adults we have so many things on our plate that it can be difficult to just enjoy the moments and the process you know it's a process life is a process we're always processing so um, anyway like I've shared before I work full-time I go to school full-time I have three kids blah, blah, blah. I have three kids I'm a single mom and uh, of course I've got this YouTube thing going I have friends um, I have to work out um, I have to get groceries and so there is a lot on my plate a lot of people can relate with that in one way or another but yet we all have the same amount of hours in our day and we all have to figure out how to handle best what we allow on our plate so I have been reading a couple of books um, this one is the soul searchers handbook it's by Emma Milden and this book is oh, it's amazing. Um, if you have not checked this out or heard of this, go on Amazon right now. Just pause the video, put you know, minimize me. Go to Amazon and order this book. Um, it was like eight, fifteen or eighteen bucks, and it has been so good. I'm like, I'm kind of taking my time going through it so I can really like absorb so much of it. But um, <clears throat> you know, it's just good because I started this year just wanting to learn how to like love myself more you know how to first take care of that kind of like when you're in the airplane and the oxygen mask drop they say you know put it on you first so that you can then help the person next to you we tend to think that that's a very selfish thing I've been guilty of that however if you don't take care of yourself you don't think you're worth it why in the world would you expect someone else to think you are you're gonna set the tone for how other people treat you I mean ultimately and so it's important and the sooner you recognize that the happier you'll be you're welcome um, one of the things in here um, is talking about starting the journey and she says you can search throughout the entire universe for someone who is more deserving of your love than you are yourself and that person is not to be found you yourself as much as anyone in the entire universe deserve your love and affection and Sharon Salzberg that's her quote um, she talks about how people tend to think that there's a beginning, middle, and end to whatever it may be, your spiritual journey, uh, maybe your uh, wellness journey. That's, you know, like a diet. There, with every diet, there's like a beginning and an end point. You're on a diet. You're off your diet. You know, whatever it may be. That's the problem. Because true spirituality, true nutrition, true wellness 
wholeness is a lifestyle. It's a daily thing, right? So first of all, it's a matter of transforming your mind into getting out of that mental block of, you know, I'm on or off or beginning or ending or whatever it may be, like putting a timeline. Just taking those steps every day is, is what makes the difference. Um, and so anyways, um, this is a great journey, it, or this is a great book. She talks about all different kinds of um, soul work, um, different kinds of ideas um, that are out there from yoga to mantras to meditation to um, crystal therapy, crystal healing therapy to, you know, acupuncture, chiropractic care. I mean, she covers a lot of stuff on here. She uses a woo-woo scale, um, depending on how, you know, alternative this method may be. Um, it's very, very good. Uh, the other book that I'm reading is called Adventures for Your Soul. Um, this is by Shannon Kaiser. This is also a phenomenal book. Um, I've just started getting into this one. Um, I can't I can't get too sidetracked from my other one. I'm trying to focus on one at a time. But um, one of the things that she has in here is a joy journal. And it gives you ideas on how to, to start and implement um, new things in your life, how to get the thought process going to maybe kind of help you figure out how to start that journey. One of the things she talks about is if you were to write a movie, how would you want to be portrayed? Like if you were going to write a movie about your life, how would you want to be portrayed? And that may help kind of take you back to, what am I doing with my life? What are you doing with your life? <laughs> um, I know there are definitely parts of my story that I would rather just like, oh, maybe we don't need to put that in the movie. I don't think we need to do that. But, um, you know, this is a good part. This is this is my blockbuster hit point, right? Like, this is when, when the rubber meets the road, this is where you get the Grammy, right? Because this is where I'm awake. And that's that's the question I have for you today. Are you awake? Are you aware? Are you present? What are you doing to invest in yourself? What are you doing to write your story? Is it is it being written the way you would want it portrayed, how you would want it written? Because if it's not, honey, you are in control. And you need to take ownership of that. You have your whole life ahead of you. you got many, many great days. And each day, you can start a new day fresh and start writing more of that movie the way you want it portrayed. So today I challenge you, wake up, pay attention, be present, grab life by the horns and direct it. Be the director of your own movie. You got this. You got this. Thanks for coming by. I hope you are having a great day. Um, I hope that this whole weekend coming up is a beautiful weekend for you. We're going to have great weather here in Oklahoma. Whoop whoop. And I'm ready for spring. It's not spring yet, but we're getting closer. Um, anyways, if you would not mind, please like and comment and share. Share this with your friends. And hit that little button down there that says subscribe. Let me know that you want to see more of these. So, anyways, have a great day. I love you guys. Mwah! <laughs>